So as you all know, wood turning is an expensive game. And once you go out and you buy face plates and chucks and implements to help you turn and shields and tools and, and even timber, you gotta go, sometimes you buy that, or, and then finishes, you gotta go buy all that gear. But then when it comes to sanding, that's just another expense. So I wanna quickly go over something that I've learnt that I believe will help you guys out a lot and it actually saves me quite a lot of money but it will vary for where you where you live around the world but I want to talk to you to you about how to get your own sandpaper discs and how to process them with these wad punches so first thing is what is a wad punch and these wad punches here are just a steel bit of pipe I guess and they've been cut and this three inch wad punch here is 6.3 mil and this one here is the oh good we just went negative let's reset that one on off reset right I don't know how that great you are anyway 6.7 mil and when I first purchased these from my local wood turning club the angle on them was quite flat so I've gone ahead and changed that to around the 45 50 degree angle and that has made them made them more aggressive when I'm trying to punch a heap of sandpaper out and I can normally get I can normally get around three or four deep it works quite effective the way they are but if you were looking to invest in getting your own wad punches, because I saw them when him first using them on his Instagram channel, and I've just got this bolt here because the ones that I would highly recommend, and I'm not sponsored by any of this, I'm, I'm not backed by anyone, so this is purely coming from a place of trying to help you out along your journey. The ones I would suggest are by made by Glenn Lucas. You could have probably guessed that. But the beauty of them are is they've got this sort of bolt on the back. The bolt on the back is beautiful because I've found when I'm trying to hammer these out by hand, you end up nicking your fingers. So you end up nicking the sides of your fingers, you know, when you're trying to hammer a nail and you always end up hitting your fingers. That is perfect, that you just hold the bolt and punch the bolt and that spreads and distributes that punch nice and evenly over, over the surface. And when you are sharpening, I like to hold it on the platform really steady, getting even amount of pressure. Whereas Glenn Lucas has that, that bolt on the back and he just, you know, you just hold this to sort of steady it and turn the, turn the head as you're sharpening. So they do look a lot neater than, than these ones here. If I was you and you're buying something that looks like this, don't use a steel mallet because you will end up bending and distorting the back of your wad punch because you have to get a bit heavy handed with them sometimes when they're getting a bit blunt and you know, I always wanna just get things done and get going with stuff. And, and if I have to stop to go and sharpen, it's just a pain in the ring, so. But. Hey guys, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name's Kerry Corney. I'm a wood turner from Brisbane, Australia, and I'm just documenting everything I can to hopefully help you out wherever you are along your wood turning journey. And I'm just going to be sharing everything I can as I progress. So hopefully you're yeah, learning something from what I'm sharing and you're getting something out of it. So we'll get back to the video and talk about wood punches. What you'll need if you wanna punch out your own discs is a, I've used one of these chopping boards here. It's the actual plastic pot chopping boards. It's got a fancy name. I'll put it on the screen below. And you purchase these. I got these from my local wood turning club. And I go online and I purchase packs of these of all different sizes up to 600 grit. Using a wad punch is quite a cost effective method, but it'll slow you down if you use a mallet to whack the back of them because it is loud, it's time consuming, and it is inefficient. The best way to do it is to use a shop press, but our shop press is at the other shop where the trucks are. So how do we use a wad punch? Now, these wad punches here are slightly bigger than your three inch and your two inch power heads. Even my rotary sanders they are bigger than my rotary sanders and the beauty of that is is that they will allow you to get around the curve of your bowl with without hitting the actual power head or your rotary sanders and damaging them so it allows you that flexibility when you're getting around the sides and they will curl up around the side of the bowl or or the platter or whatever project you're doing so 
from a six inch sandpaper disc, I can get two three inch discs and two two inch discs like this. If I was only wanting two inch standing discs from this six inch disc here, I can get seven two inch discs. all your sandpaper discs. I've just organized it in one of these trays and you can find them from your local hardware store and I've just taken the lid off or you can keep the lid on and use it as you wish. But I have this just in, a, in an old nursing trolley that uh, used to get wheeled around in the emergency department. But this is how I arrange all my sandpaper discs and this I believe was one of my old little tackle boxes. I found it out in our little fishing shed and I've just arranged all my sandpaper discs for my two inch in this one here and it keeps it all nice and clean and it all goes in there and then all my other implements go around the sides. So these are rotary sanders and this is a rotary sander by U-Boot Polishers and this is the Vicmark rotary sander and the beauty of this sander here is that it draws, you hook your shop back up to the back of it and it draws the dust down in through here. So if you want to see more about how I actually go about using my power head sanders and my rotary sanders, check this video out here. And if you think I've earned it, give us a thumbs up down below and if you've gotten something from the video. Cheers guys, I'll see you there.